Results of the governorship election so far released indicate that the All Progressives Congress won the governorship polls in the 15 states, while the People's Democratic Party won six states and the NNPP secured Kano State. We'll continue our review of the elections on the breakfast so far. And in Off the Press, we bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All these ahead on The Breakfast. Very good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. And of course, uh, we are set for a very, very interesting program presentation right here on The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. Uh, election 2015 or 2023 rather is still on and uh, the coalition is still on. It's not over. They're still counting some states. But of course, our eyes have been firmly fixed uh, and fixated uh, on the uh, coalition centers across the country in the different state capitals uh, where the state coalition officers and returning officers have been doing their job as usual. Uh, lots of controversy in different states. Uh, some attempts, you know, to um, by some people allegedly uh, saying that uh, the results are the attempts to try and change the results in favor of one party or the other and resistance coming uh, from the people. And um, you keep hearing the narrative, the narrative that the Independent National Electoral Commission is uh, complicit in one way or the other, either through you know, coalition officers, returning officers, or even just the, uh, the staff of the commission at different uh, polling units and the wards and all that. And people are complaining. And um, you know what? The Independent National Electoral Commission has a lot of questions to answer about its role in alleged rigging about its role in alleged rigging, if you listen to what people are saying. They just have to come out and answer so that they can clear the air on what exactly is going on. But in other states, the, the Independent National Electoral, Com Electoral Commission has done well, um, you know, to try <clears throat> and make sure that they do a good job. Um, but in some other states, it's, you begin to ask yourself what is going on. Um, uh, are the parties contesting against themselves? Or are they contesting against themselves and against INEC? You know, it's and and right now it's basically a, um, a contest between the worst election in Nigeria's history, 2007, presided over by the then INEC chairman, uh, Professor Maurice Iwu, and this particular 2023 election, super super superintended over by Professor Mamodi Akubu. It's 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 um, we're still trying to understand which is the worst. Is it the 2007 elections? Where till date, uh, if you ask for the results from the states. And I can't give you the results from the state from what uh, those who have tried to get it are saying. Uh, last one I read, uh, one of the papers said they approached uh, INEC for the results from, uh, from the states and they were told to go to the state INEC offices to get those results. You know, that was then seen to be the worst election in Nigeria's history. But this election uh, is, is threatening to overtake that. And it is sad to see. It is sad to see. Um, when you see the, the, the electoral umpire, you know, deliberately shifting, shifting election uh, polling units to places where people can easily be attacked by, by, by thugs. When you see uh, officials of the electoral organizer uh, attempting to, to disenfranchise voters by closing polling units um, earlier than they should. And actually residents are begging to, allow, to be allowed to vote. You know, when the law says that when you are in the queue, uh, by the time of voting is supposed to end, which is 2.30, you, the last person on that queue should be allowed to vote. And then you begin to ask yourself, whose interest is INEC operating in? Is it in the interest of the political parties or the interest of Nigerians? You know, when we hear over 300 billion naira budgeted for INEC, whose money is that? Is it the money of the politicians or the money of Nigerians? You know, and... Um, Posterity is, is, is doing press up to see how to judge or to rank this election uh, and what legacy Professor Mahmoud Yakub will leave at the end of the day. Anyway, our first trending segment uh, story on this, on the trending, top trending segment right here on Plus TV Breakfast is um, Enugu residents stripping out to INEC office to, um, uh, you know, ex express their frustration at what they allege is the uh, attempt of the People's Democratic Party to manipulate the election results. You know, um, the PDP, 
is the ruling party in Enugu State. Uh, and um, of course, the All Progressives Congress is also a party that is rising and trying its best to, to come up in Enugu State. So um, this, is, this is quite an interesting situation. And the other parties are in that state, you know, in the election, uh, are the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Uh, we also have the Labour Party as well. As uh, one of the, uh, the top um, politicians in that state, uh, Chimaroke Namani, who is of the PDP, but has openly voiced his, um, his uh, support for the All Progressives Congress presidential candidate. So supporters of both the Labour Party and the um, Peel's Democratic Party um, had to take themselves all the way to the INEC headquarters in Enugu State, at the front of the office, both engaging in a protest. What the Labour Party in Enugu State was saying is that uh, they're protesting the non-usage of beavers to conduct the governorship election in Enugu State. Now, why, why would, why would INEC refuse to use the beavers? You know, why would INEC officials go take this device that, you know, you know billions of dollars have been spent to, pro to procure, I mean, that's part of the money, not, not that exactly the billions were spent, but, you know, or billions of naira. And then go to it and then say we're not going to use the, the beavers. What is going on? You know, there's a, there's a video, and we thank God for the thing called a mobile phone, where, you know, people can film and put it on social media. The video of a reverend father somewhere in River State, you know, somewhere in River State, you know, raining curses. On, on, on officials of INEC who refuse to count the, the, the votes, uh, uh, upload them and all that in their presence and just went away with electro materials. And you have a reverend father. I mean, is he, is he a thug or is he lying? He's a reverend father who is saying, why would you live like that? Widespread reports of officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission acting in a manner that shows that they are colluding with powerful politicians to rig the election. And I know that people will come out to whitewash this, even in the media. But you see, the, the, the beautiful thing about this is this isn't the first time. We live in a country where, where, where politicians or their proxies have sat in the offices of INEC Rex to write results. Sometimes the results come out and the number of those who voted are more than those who are even on the register. But guess what? They get to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court says, approved. So, I mean, there's nothing new here, really. There's nothing new. Um, so, Labour Party supporters in Enugu State are protesting the non-usage of the beavers. Now, asking, why would you conduct an election? And then you've touted this device called the beavers only for you to come on election day and refuse to use it. What are you, why are you refusing? What is the problem? You, use your mouth to say we want to use the beavers. And then on election day, you refuse to use it. You refuse to use it. You know, anyway. So the election in Nkano East local government area is where the Labour Party supporters are complaining of. Well, the PDP uh, supporters are saying that the results should be declared in their favor. And we hear that Labour Party has uh, had um, uh, submitted a petition to the Independent National Electoral Commission in respect of the results for Nkanu East uh, uh, local government area. <laughs> anyway, what we know now, I, I mean, from the results that have been announced, um, the two South Asian Eastern states, Abia State and Enugu State, are not there. So, uh, INEC suspended those results. Uh, uh, not the results, but the results collation, let me call it that. You know, and that's what we hear. So, we're also able to tell you how many states the, the, the PDP and ABC have won, and even NP. We can't tell you the entire picture because of Avia State, uh, Enugu State, amongst other states. Okay, so that's that. Um, we move on, but um, uh, that in Kano East local government area election, we, it's wait, it, it remains to be seen if the, the electoral umpire would, 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 would uh, reconduct that election because you can't refuse to upload results electronically. You can't. You can't. Anyway, we, we have to move on. Um, uh, I'll just take a quote of one of the protesters. This is a, a Labour Party supporter who was quoted in the Punch newspaper. Uh, it says, quote, uh, this is the leader of the protesters, by the way. They want INEC to complete the sham, saying we should go to court. We won't accept it. 
Our demand is, though, that votes that didn't meet the threshold of the election requirements, <laughs> threshold of the election requirements as a minimum standards, should be cancelled. We also are demanding that places where elections did not hold or were cancelled because of violence be conducted, be conducted before finally re releasing the results. You know, and when I hear the, the, the electoral umpire or his spokesman, our good friend, uh, Festus Okoye, um, come out to, to tell us that, uh, you know, the elections in some places will, will, will be cancelled. I mean, of course, he's quoting law now um, because of violence. You know, then it means that we are playing into the hands of politicians and their, um, their accomplices in INEC. Their accomplices in INEC. Why? So you see some 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 uh, boys or agberos or touts or thugs, you know, come and then just chase everybody away and scatter election material in areas where they think they have uh, less a, le a less of an advantage, and where maybe the opposing party has uh, uh, many supporters. Then they just go there, scatter the you know election materials and chase everybody away, and then over. Then the next, oh, violence here. We can't hold elections. Zero. So in that area where maybe a party, a PDP, or a Labour Party, or APC, whichever it is, could have gotten a significant amount of votes because of that action, zero. And in some places, the INEC officials are so quick, so quick to, to run away. Now, some, so you can't blame them if their lives are threatened. What can you do? There's a video, a brave Nigerian film, of an INEC official carrying his, like we say in this country, ungo, ungo, his things, his property, and leaving the place in, do you want them to break my head? You know, before, do you want them to break my head? Now, what some of these people are saying is this. When you suspend those elections, reorganize them like it was done in, in VGC, in Lagos State. Bring a reinforcement of security operatives there. Conduct them on Sunday. Bring a reinforcement of security operatives there, and then let the election hold. And let's see who is going to come and scuttle it. Because people must vote. People must vote. Otherwise, uh, politicians can say, well, let's just send some boys there, scatter it, scatter it, and I go right zero. And then that's it. It's really sad. It's really sad. And, and the electoral umpire cannot be seen or be deemed to be hand in glove with powerful politicians to help them rig the elections. It is the same thing as a referee in a football match being partial to one team. Can such a match stand by FIFA standards? No, not at all. Posterity is going to judge all those who are complicit in stealing the mandate of the people in different parts of the country. Now, this is not about one party or two parties. It happens everywhere. You know, APC is the winner of the presidential. People are complaining, but they're the loser in some states where they are also victims. They are complaining. <laughs> A case in point is River State. Okay, let's go on. Um, the next one is... Uh, um, he was allegedly attacked in Lagos State. Now, yesterday we put up a tweet by uh, someone who's supposed to be a spokesman for the APC Presidential Campaign Council, and it was a worrying tweet. It, 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 it was, you know, he was he was hate speech actually, by all global standard definitions of hate speech, you know, targeted at a particular tribe. And, and we have laws in this country. We have, we have rules in this country. It is the APC-led federal government that propagates or promulgated and uh, midwifed this law against hate speech in the country. And some of us applauded it because hate speech is wrong. And we know what hate speech has done in countries around the world. I'm tired of talking about the Rwanda example. It's not a portion. <laughs> but it will be a portion if we continue like this. I hope not. So it is surprising that, and it's worrying, that a government, a political party, 
All Progressives Congress that has introduced a law against hate speech has its supporters. For example, MC Oluomo, captured on video, has his officials, for example, Bayo Onanuga, live on Twitter, s propagating hate speech and, and verbal attack on a particular tribe. You know, it is, it is, it is, it is not acceptable. And I've looked at the definition of hate speech in, for many years. You know, when arguing on radio with those who say, yeah, why is the government bringing about hate speech? And I'll try to explain to them why this is important. Any statement that is, is that, 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 that stirs up hatred, anger, you know, at a particular tribe or group or segment of society based on how they look, the color of their skin, you know, where they belong and over is considered hate speech. And we need to, we need to call ourselves to order. And I've said this a number of times, that there are certain things in our, in our minds, our brains, that react and, um, uh, you know, um, are really awakened when it comes to things that we hold dear. Things like religion and things like tradition, things like uh, our ethnic, you know, background. These things stir up. That's why when Nigeria is playing, people feel passionate. That is why when a country goes to war, the soldiers feel passionate. That is why when you hear the national anthem, you feel passionate. That is why when you go to the mosque to pray, or there's anything about Allah or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, okay? You feel passionate. If I didn't add that peace be upon some people may be angry. Why? Because it is a requirement. They are passionate about it. That's an example. That's why when people talk about your pastor, you feel passionate. You want to defend him because these things stir up certain feelings in our, in our brains, in our bodies. We react differently to them. Okay? Now, the, the people in Rwanda, intellectuals, middle class, elites, who turned on their neighbors, who were from different tribes, either the Hutus or the Tutsis, either the Hutus or the Tutsis, and hacked them to death, macheted them to death, or handed them over to killer squads, burned their houses, chased them away. Today, these, these people, if you ask them, how could you do such a thing? They can't explain it. They can't even believe that they turned into animals overnight. They became carnivorous overnight. They became barbarians overnight. Why? Because when people who have the opportunity play on those sensitive things, those things we hold dear, religion, ethnicity, okay, something in our brain kicks into action. It kicks into action. And in some instances, we can actually abandon all form of reason, logical reasoning, logical reasoning. So these are the things that can, can, can kick people into actions. And you have, and we can see it playing out, the people who are meant to know better, meant to know better about how to address issues, are not, are not are throwing caution to the wind. And after, throwing, and after you know, uh, propagating hate speech, they actually defend it. Because some of these things, when they take you over, you begin to act irrationally, illogically. And you see, anyone who makes any decision, maybe about who to vote and all for and all that, based on all these you know, um, uh, factors that are, uh, make us take decisions by instinct, we're still living in uh, what uh, Hobbes called a, a, a state of nature, where each man is living for himself. He has to fend for himself, not organized in a way uh, uh, this was um, a hypothetical state before society became organized, and the, the philosophers can tell us better about it. You know, it's it's likened to a primitive thinking, where you know we are we are taking decisions illogically, not based on on certain fundamental, even scientifically proven facts. Okay, so everybody needs to calm down, and take a step back.
and reset. Otherwise, we might begin to see that people who come from a certain tribe, certain tribes in certain parts of the country, will be, have to become refugees in their own country. You know, now we are hearing the attacks on Igbos in parts of Lagos State. You know, because the man who does not, is not able to separate his, you know, logic and make, think logically, we re re rely on these sensi sensibilities and these sensitive emotions and these things. And when he keeps hearing, you know, that a particular man is his problem because of where he or she is from, which is what Hitler did in, in, in Nazi Germany. <laughs> you know, it's what Hitler did in Nazi Germany. And even the German elites fell for it. They didn't see anything wrong in concentration camps being opened where the Jews were going to be put in. Places like Auschwitz. They didn't see anything wrong in, in the gas chambers that were created to, 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 to mass murder Jews. When these things take you over, sometimes reason disappears, logic deserts you, and you begin to act like a primitive human being. And hatred. I'm getting calls from people I know, credible calls, telling me that they are afraid to come back to Lagos. They went to the southeast. They are afraid to come back because their, their, their neighbors are giving them calls and telling them, you know, you are my enemy, uh, don't come back, and all that. And they are saying, this is not the person I, was, I used to drink beer with. It's not the person I used to chat with. I know one, one, one lady who told me, excuse me, she exited her WhatsApp, church WhatsApp group because of the hatred uh, and attacks on a certain segment of society. I've been in WhatsApp groups, okay, where people who are educated and enlightened actually are, are throwing scorn at Igbos. Now, what did the Igbos in Lagos do? They didn't have a candidate standing in election. Not a single governorship candidate was from the southeast in Lagos State. What they simply did is to want to express themselves by voting. That's all they, they have done. Now, are you going to fall for politicians? When they sit down and say, how do we win this election? It seems we are losing now. OK, let's have a strategy. Let's appeal to the ethnic feelings of, of our people. And let's tell them that if they don't vote for us, they're going to lose their home to to foreigners, which is a lie. And then they put it in, because people are passionate about these things, they fall for it, but it's a lie. Because it's a strategy by politicians to win elections. And it's sad that the, um, the not the Nigerian Communications Commission, but the, um, the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria allowed some of these things. I saw adverts on social media, on the internet, on websites, you know, these Google ads where a particular party was saying, protect your land, protect your heritage, uh, vote for us, so that Lagos will not be handed over to foreigners. You know, and it's worrying. It's worrying, really. So we have a segment of society, people who are not interested in any agitation whatsoever. Now, today, okay, any secessionist ag agitation or IPOB or whatever, now today they are made, they are made, made to look foolish. Because their brothers and sisters who are telling them to support such a cause are laughing at them. And now the likes of Simon Ekpa can come and say, I told you so. We're actually proving them right. Why? Because we just want to win an election. You see, I want to talk to my Yoruba brothers and sisters in Lagos. So this is where we are. Don't allow anyone deceive you that this is about tribe and ethnicity. No, it's not about that. It's about winning an election. That's what it's about. And for Lagos, our Yoruba brothers and sisters need to ask themselves a question. And of course, it's not all Yorubas who are attacking Igbos. No. But because of the lies that have been peddled, they need to ask themselves a question. Lagos is, by heritage, Yoruba land. We have revered monarchs all over. It is settled. Nobody can argue about that. But is Lagos for a party, because they are two different things. Lagos is Yoruba land, settled. No one can take that away. But is Lagos 
for a particular party, because those are two different things. Now, what those who are selling this narrative of tribal division to you is telling you that if we don't win, Lagos will be handed over to a certain tribe, which is not true. Which is not true. But fear, fear has driven people to act in such a way. So attacks on Igbos have been reported in Abuledo area of Lagos State. And people need to be wise, you know. The police have come out to counter these this stories. But the incident we hear is reported that it occurred hours after the governorship and House of Assembly elections took place in most parts of Lagos State. Um, there's a trending video. I don't know if we can play it, but it shows two young uh, Igbo men being carried into a vehicle after they were allegedly wounded by suspected political thugs, okay? After they were allegedly wounded by suspected political thoughts. Um, uh, Abule Edo, Edo is located near Festa Town in a more Dauphin area of Lagos State. It has a large population of Southeasterners. Um, S.C. Benjamin Hundey, who is a police public relations officer in Lagos State, um, is saying that normalcy has been restored, okay? Um, so, so we have a lot of materials out there. I listened to one song yesterday, and um, everybody who heard it, who spoke to about, told me that song is just spewing hate. It's just spewing hate. Everyone who listened to that song yes, that I, yesterday that I played that song for just told me, and the song is just spewing hate. You have a lot of these materials being shared. People, you, someone will do a, a song, write a song, put it online. It's being shared on WhatsApp. And the song is, is preaching uh, hate against a particular tribe. And we're sharing it around. We, I think we're working on thin ice, you know. We're working on thin ice, and it's it's. Uh, we need to really call ourselves, and this is where the leaders of 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 thought, leaders of thought, need to sit people down and say, "Hey, um, we we need to be to be careful so that we do not fall into a trap, you know, and like the Rwandans fell into." And I think people like the president elect can do that, you know, can do. It. It's, it's worrying, really. If there's any truth to this, and we're waiting for the police regulations officer to, to, to say something about this. If there's any truth in this, then it is absolutely, absolutely worrying. Okay? So we, we are calling on everyone to, to step back, to step down. I mean, right now they, we even have a controversy because fa fa families, you know, someone was asking me yesterday if I see how my brothers uh, and sisters from the southeast are being beaten up and chased away. And I'm, a, I'm a, an Igbo man. My wife is Yoruba. When I go home, I'm, what am I supposed to do? And I said, if you go home and you start victimizing your wife, then there's no difference between you and the, the people who are doing these things. You know? But for the fact that this individual is asking me uh, this question, um, is, he says it all. He says it all, that all is not well. So we want to appeal on to the politicians. You know, you, you've done enough damage already. Can you please call your, 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 your people to order? Call these thugs to order. Come out and, and condemn these attacks and then ask people to stay back because they will listen to you. They don't know that you're doing these things just because you want to win an election. The field is, is in defense on their of their land. You know, We had a fellow in the Southeast also doing the same thing. And he was appealing to people's sensibilities and all that. Okay? Right now, there's a song I hear. A very, very disturbing song. You know, praising the governor, but warning him. And what some people from the Southwest are saying is that, um, you know, we, we almost made a mistake. Thank God we survived this. It will never happen again. And we're going to see reprisal, repercussions. You know, sort of like a clean-up. In, this, in, this, in the same Nigeria... Come on, it's, it's shocking. So the earlier we realize that we are on a one-way street to anarchy, the better. And I want to speak to those of you who are, you know, educated, enlightened persons who are also towing this line. Some of you are in your WhatsApp groups, in your office WhatsApp groups, in, in places you are towing this line. Please, let's call ourselves to order. It's very important. And for those who are planning reprisal attacks in other parts of the country, because it always happens that way.
we need to realize that two wrongs do not make the right. Last one, journalists always bear the brunt of some of these things, uh, you know, whenever they happen, especially during election period and politically charged periods. And uh, chairman of the Nigerian Union of Journalists uh, in Kanu State is uh, condemning uh, attacks on on journalists during the governorship election in Kano State. Um, this is uh, Malam Abbas Ibrahim. He's condemned the attack on the journalists in Gwali, local government area of Kano State. All right, he's calling also on politicians to understand that journalists are not their enemies uh, and that their duty as citizens is in line with the constitutional provision. He also calls on, called on journalists to ensure their safety first because one has to be alive to be able to report. That is very, 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 very important. You know, and these are, are thugs who attacked the journalist um, at uh, Gidan Galadima in Gwali local government area. Okay? They attacked uh, Ashir Umar. Um, and the NUJ is condemning this. But who sent those thugs? Politicians. And these politicians are going to come into power. They're asking you to vote for them so they can solve problems of Nigeria, including insecurity. But in the, in the process of asking you to vote for them so they can solve insecurity, they actually are creating insecurity and instability. And when they come in, they want to solve insecurity. And we sit down here and discuss, oh, how can the president, how can the governor solve insecurity? But the person who is in power, you know, may have gotten there by creating insecurity and instability. So what are we talking about? It means that we're wasting our time. Next time we have security breaches in the country, we have to discuss such a problem. I may not even want to talk about it because of the insecurity that politicians have created in this election and the instability. So why should we, why should we discuss insecurity and proper solutions when me and the politicians who are trying to get in there themselves create it? It's not a waste of time. <laughs> it's a waste of time. So that's the decision I've made. In my programs, I will do, except, of course, the station says we should discuss it, and I will, because why are we wasting our time <laughs> when we know the root cause? Um, so we will join the Nigerian of journalists to condemn attacks on anyone, including journalists, and also call on, on government agencies like INEC to allow journalists cover their activities. We've seen and heard of protests in different state coalition centers where uh, the electoral umpire has attempted to pick and choose which um, journalist or which agency will cover their activities, which is worrying, and we will ask why. Anyway, a word of advice is enough. We'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll look at what the papers are saying. <laughs>